Hey YouTube, it's Marita from The Nurse Lounge and today we are going to continue my series of my narcissistic marriage, my road to recovery, and today's topic is the red flags. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, stay tuned. that I'm taking and that I'm sipping on or sucking on or whatever and it's pretty good but anyway in this video we're going to talk about red flags and the red flags that I have seen in the marriage that I see now that I even saw then but chose to ignore so when it comes to my narcissistic husband um first before I even go into this let me go ahead and give this disclaimer that I am not a licensed therapist. I am not a counselor. I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist. I'm not a MD. I am not a life coach. I'm not any of those things. So I'm not here to per se give advice. I'm just here to share my story on my narcissistic marriage, what I've endured and how I'm trying to overcome. That's basically all I'm trying to do. So with that being said, anything that you ask me is not based off of research. You know, if I give you an answer, it's based off of my experience is what I'm basically trying to say. Um, I'm not someone to give you advice on something that I am not well versed in in terms of at a professional level. I'm just talking about my experiences as a spouse of a narcissist. So anyway, the red flag. So again if you don't red flags are things that kind of you know kind of put up on your radar is something like intuition something that's telling you that mm, something's not right with the situation and a lot of times because we want to make a relationship work we always tend to say mm, yeah but maybe it's because of this so we overlook them or we give them the benefit of the doubt i'm here to tell you that those red flags are there for a reason and those red flags are telling you that you need to um not do whatever your red flags are warning you against so some of the some of the red flags that i noticed very early on with my husband that i chose to ignore and not only even just chose to ignore but that things that i've even brought up to other people are like, oh well that's pretty typical for that age or that's typical for this or maybe because of this they even made excuses for him that i even like i was baited so to speak i even believed them like okay yeah maybe you're right so a red flag, I remember one day saying very early on that, you know what, something's off with him and I think he needs a check. When I say he needs a check, I mean he's crazy. You know, and when you say people like they need a check, they like, okay, uh-uh, they, they, something's a little off with them. They, they qualify for a check, I think, like one of them disability checks. And I'm not trying to down anybody who is, uh, who has a disability. I'm just saying there's some people out here who are crazy, who they not documented and they could, they could get some benefits because they need some. And he was one of those where I'm like, hmm, something's a little off with him and I can't put, you know, pinpoint what it is. And this is me trying to figure out this whole narcissist thing that I didn't know about. But I'm like, what, what is it that he, you know, why is he crazy? So some of the things that he would do that I learned very early on is his, for one, his mother still controlled everything he did. We're talking about in the early twenties at this point in time. So we're talking about beyond, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. And we met when we were about teenagers 17 years old or so i'm talking about when you're like 24 25 and your mother requires you to go on or maybe 23 24 and your mother still requires you to, to go on family vacations with them requires requires okay requires um at 23 24 22 you should be able to like okay i have to work so his mom would sabotage his jobs where he would work excuse me, he would work and then she would call and say he's not coming to work this week because he's going on a family vacation with us. And then he wonders why he lost his job. Big red flag, okay? And then another red flag on that top of that situation was he never spoke up for himself, okay? So she would say something and he never spoke up for himself. That was a problem that I should have picked up on very, very early. Another one 
I would say is the fact that he did not know how to conduct business. Now, in terms of being a narcissist in itself, not knowing how to conduct business is not an issue, but in terms of maturity wise, him being immature, and there's a lot, and this is when I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. Well, if nobody's ever showed you how to do this, that, and the other, then you're not gonna know how to do it, right? Right. Well, part of me is like, okay, well maybe it's his parents' fault because they never taught him how to be at a job on time. He was losing jobs left and right because if he had to be somewhere at nine o'clock in the morning, as an example, he not leaving the house till 8.58. And then he wondering why he's getting rolled up all the time. Red flag. I should have known at that point in time that he was irresponsible. So even if he wasn't a narcissist at that point in time, he still, well, in terms of me recognizing it, he was still irresponsible where he would continuously lose jobs because he wouldn't show up on time. Um, he would only go for, I start noticing he would only go for low paying jobs. Like jobs would come open. We would see all these jobs with, you know, um, making this much money. I remember one day he said to me, I think we were watching the news and he said, oh, they're a news anchor. I bet you they make at least 20,000 a year. And he was saying 20,000, like that's a lot of money. 20,000 is no money, y'all. It's no money. But to him, that was like, what we may say 100,000 or something like that, or 150,000, 200,000. He up here thinking like 20,000. So that, that should have told me right then his bar is set so low that he up here thinking that 20,000 is like upper echelon and it's not. And so... I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, maybe, but maybe because we're only in our 20s, maybe because we're in our 20s is why he thinks this way. And, and, you know, I need to give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, we're 42 now and he still thinks this way. Okay. So that hasn't changed one, one bit. He's still going for those low paying jobs that my daughter should have or that a teenager should have. Um, not where someone who's a grown man who should be in a career. Uh, which brings me to the next one. He's never wanted a career. He just wants jobs and he doesn't understand the difference between the two. So in case you don't know the difference between the two, a job is something you go do like work, work at McDonald's. Okay. That's a job to make McDonald's a career. You would need to move up and then eventually maybe even own a franchise or be, be regional manager or be district manager or something like that. Not where you come in as dropping fries and 20 years later, you still drop in fries. That is a job, not a career. Um, so make something that you want to make, make it a career. He was not doing that. He would just go from McDonald's to, uh, what's, what, uh, let me think. I can't think of not one fast food restaurant that I think about it that he has not worked at. I cannot think of not one because why he would job hop from one of those to the other. Yeah, he was very good at what he did because he didn't been to all of them. But my thing is, why aren't you moving up to the next level? Why aren't you moving up to, you know, to, to manager or whatever? Well, it ended up, you know, he's 40 something years old and the, the manager be 25 and, and he or she running him and then he complaining about it. I'm like, okay, but you didn't want to move up. So again, he doesn't have any type of discipline. He doesn't have any desire to move up another red flag. Again, not necessarily for narcissism, but in terms of if it's not at a level that you want to be at, that's not who you want to be with. So we have that. Then we have another red flag where I told you about his mother. I told you about um, his work ethic. Another red flag is that he did not take care of his daughter. His mother did. And I'm beginning to learn, even as we speak today, a man who does not take care of his children is not, a, and, and not because of the woman, but a man who does not take care of his children or a woman who does not take care of her, her children is not somebody you want to be with. If they don't value their children who they created, they're not going to value you too much besides what they can get from you. Red flag. He would always say he loved her, but he never spent any money on her. He didn't go pick her up. He didn't go do any of those things. He, he acted like he was a big brother to her versus a father to her, to his daughter. Now, when it came to my kids, my girls, he was very much there for my girls, which was kind of odd. Um, he took care of my girls very well, but he took care of them better than he'd take care of his biological boys that we have together. My girls are from a previous relationship. My boys are with him and he takes care or took care of my girls better than he took care of his own biological boys. So again, there's a disconnect there. Another red flag. When it comes to someone who is not motivated and who cannot save money, that's an issue. Also another red flag for me, um, which I learned is a part of narcissism is that he has no respect for authority. There is no authority figure out there that he could care for. Meaning that he doesn't per se pick fights with anybody or he doesn't pick fights at all with anybody. But he's someone who likes to go under the radar 
and do things illegally and then he's always someone who does things illegally or go around the way to do it a certain way like you know like for instance your children shouldn't be in the front seat of the car okay with under a certain age and weight they shouldn't be in the front seat of the car well he would put the child there in the front seat of the car with no no car seat no booster seat no nothing riding around and wondering why the police pulling him over so he's not safe he's not responsible things like that red flag um he doesn't pay any of his bills red flag so therefore how do i think we're gonna get ahead of being paying for nothing and i mean debt that he creates so you best to believe if he go create some debt he's not gonna pay for it he's not gonna pay for it his name is bad all over town he cannot get anything in his name hence everything had to be in my name which is another red flag when you meet someone and you know you meet them if he does not have the ability to, if he's never been on his own, which again, that's a red flag for me too. He's never been on his, well, he has been on his own. I'll take that back. He had been on his own, but he was not successful at it. Um, him and the girlfriend at the time lost the apartment. So that should have been a red flag to say, okay, he's not responsible at that point in time. Of course, I was in my 20s, so I wasn't seeing it that way. I was like, well, okay, well, you know, I've made, I haven't lost an apartment, but I've made mistakes before where I you know, bit off more than I could chew and didn't do things the right way. So again, me giving him the benefit of the doubt. But you don't want a man who cannot, you know, if he don't have a car that he's paying for on his own or paid off, if he don't have a house or an apartment, if he don't have a way to take care of, you know, bills, if he can't afford to take you on a date, he's asking you to pay for things, then he's not ready to date you at this point in time. So if a man cannot take you out on a date and he don't have no car to pick you up in, and he don't have um, no job. He's not in a position to start dating yet. He needs to work on him. I've always talked about you working on yourself. If you are someone who is not emotionally available, if you're someone who is who is um, have trust issues, severe trust issues, you're not ready to date. So it kind of goes both ways. You know, you have to be ready to date to to date people. So like, if if you believe that a man is supposed to take care of you and protect and provide. Um, but yet he don't have a place to stay, he don't have a car to drive, and he don't have a job, well, he's not going to ever be able to do all those things. So why get into, get yourself involved with him? Tell him to get himself together. Once he gets himself together, come back and check and see where you are in life to see if it can work out. But until then, again, a red flag for me because I'm up here like, oh, you know what? Well, maybe I could help him. Maybe I could, um, you know, show him. No one's taught him anything. And that's me. This is my fault. This is me saying, okay, I'm going to be a mother to him. And... And now I'm resentful for that because I don't want to be anybody's mother that I didn't birth, okay, or that is not my child. He is clearly not my child, so I don't want that. Um, but those are some of the red flags that I definitely could see that I, I see I saw on him that he did not want to grow. He lacked um, he lacked professionalism. I learned too that he really didn't have a mind of his own, meaning that you know he would have thoughts or things that it was it'd be based off of what I said. So like he couldn't engage in conversation. Even today, if you talk to him, he can't engage in meaningful conversation about something meaningful. Now, if you ask him about some Jordans, or if you ask him about a video game, you ask him about a cartoon, you ask him about some music, oh, he can tell you all day about all that kind of thing. He can tell you all day about Drake and what the latest music is coming out, when the Jordans are coming out. He can tell you about any of that. But if you're talking about having an adult conversation about politics, religion, uh, future planning, um, building a family retirement he cannot talk about those types of things at all that's just be, that's just above his radar so to speak and that's still to this day and i remember you know talking about having budgets and things like that and he's like sure he would go through all the motions with you he would sit down and talk about the everything that you want to talk about and nod and agree but then after that happens there's no there's no corrective measures on his part nothing changed again i should have known that's a, that's a red flag when you have issues and nothing changes, they apologize, you go to counseling, but nothing changes. That is a red flag that this is not the person for you. Going to counseling in itself is not a bad thing. I actually recommend going to pre counseling or couples counseling if you choose to. Um, in my next relationship, I definitely plan on doing both. And honestly, we we did those things. We actually did pre and we did couples counseling as well. And we did counseling even after the fact. But again, even with all those provisions, he is still not the one because I chose to ignore the red flags. He would tell the priest or the counselor or whoever we were talking to whatever they wanted to hear to pacify them at the situation. But as soon as we walked out the door, he was going back to his normal mode. Again, another red flag. All these issues that, I were ha that I'm having is because I chose to ignore them. If I had have said, you know what? You have too much baggage. You're not taking care of your responsibilities. 
You listen to your mother a little bit too much to be 20 something years old. Um, you keep running to your mom for everything. You expect someone to take care of you. You want to hand out um, and not a help up. And he never, it's nothing wrong with needing help from time to time, but he never fixed the problem so he wouldn't need help again. He never did that. That is a problem when it comes to um, a relationship. So those are some of the red flags that I've endured. And there's plenty more. Keep in mind, I'm 17 years into this relationship. So there's plenty more of red flags, but I don't want to have these videos be too terribly long. Um, some videos will be longer than others, but just, you know, the, the gist of what the, the topic happens to be is just that, that there were plenty of red flags that I saw, that I saw, that I chose to ignore because I wanted the relationship so bad and because I thought he was such a great person. And keep in mind, he did all these great things for the first five years of our, our relationship, which we were not married the first five years. We didn't get married till uh, year six. So he was doing all this to appease me for, yes, five years before we got married. So I chose in those five years to ignore all those red flags. I should have known when I had to buy our wedding rings, both of our wedding rings. I should have known when he lost his wedding ring and wanted another one. I should have known that he loses everything or breaks everything because he's destructive. I should have known when he can't keep a car because of the fact that he can't get one his name. So therefore he has, he has to get somebody's old broke down car that is, you know, 10 days away from needing to be, um, needing to it, 10 days away from its demise itself. And we're putting more money into the car than it's worth. And that's how we're living all the time. You know, he cannot, he, he cannot save money to save his life. He can't do any of those things because of course he chooses not to, because that's just the type of person he is. He's a narcissist and that's how narcissists are. At least that's how some of them are. They're low functioning. At least he is. And that is just basically how he is. So anyway, Thank you all for watching this series. This is probably the fourth video on this series, or I don't know, it depends on the order that I actually post them. I have several videos that I've made. You will see me in this outfit several times because I basically come on and just do a video day where I just sit and do videos all day. And um, with that being said, I definitely plan on keeping this series going. You all have reached out to me saying that you are experiencing some of the same things and didn't know exactly what it was. And up until about four years ago, I didn't know what it was either. I couldn't put my finger on it. Like I told you, he needed a check. He needed a check. And like now he really do need a check. He still need a check. Um, because there's something definitely off with him. And it is what it is. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please thumbs this video up. Well, I'm not enjoy it. I keep saying enjoy it like, like you should be happy about this. No, what I mean is hopefully you found this, benef this uh, video beneficial to you. Insightful for you, maybe something you didn't know that you now know that you're like, hmm, let me reevaluate my relationship or let me reevaluate that relationship that somebody else is in or they have questions or whatever. And it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, it could be your boss, it could be a, a parent or a family member. But the signs are the exact same, how they treat you are the exact same. It's just the dynamic of your relationship is contingent upon who they are to you in your life. So definitely subscribe, like, comment, and share. Definitely share these videos as well as my nursing videos um, because of the fact that we need to reach people who don't know that I exist at this moment in time. There are so many people out there who are looking for inspiration and encouragement and they are unable to get it because they don't have the resources or they don't know who to turn to. I am what I call raw and uncut to a certain, to a certain degree and I'm considering myself to be an open book. I have nothing to really hide. I've had good days. I've had bad days. I've been able to discuss those good and those bad. I have had um, days in which I don't know how I'm going to make it to the next day. I've had tearful days. I've had elated days that I'm happy. I just finished my doctoral journey and um, just graduated a few days ago, um, depending on when you see this video. Um, I just finished graduating at this point in time and a missed COVID situation. And, you know, here we are. So that is, that is a great thing. And I had to finish that because otherwise he would win. And we can't have him winning because so we can't. Thank you for watching this video. And until the next video, you all take care. Bye-bye.